You are magic. Did you know that? Seriously. Think about it. If every snowflake is its own unique crystalline configuration, how uniquely individuated must you be, constituted as you are, by more than 50 trillion cells, all working together, mostly harmoniously, we hope, with more than 400 billion chemical reactions going on at any one moment, and of all the processes that are going on in us, there's only one that puts us in direct contact with the environment. That's breathing. Um, show of hands, how many people took a few breaths this morning? Anybody? <laughs> so I suspect even if you didn't raise your hand, you took a few, uh, or else you'd be in the emergency room instead of here. Oh, another show of hands, how many people took any conscious breaths this morning. Awesome. Breath is one of those things that we tend to take for granted, and yet it's the essence of who we are. It literally fuels who we are. And what we'll be playing with this morning is how breath can be a major source of transformation for us. Every breath is a new chance. So I'd invite you to just take a moment. Just notice your breathing. Don't have to do anything to it. Just be aware of it. We'll be playing a lot with awareness this morning because I believe we get what we notice. And just the act of taking a deep breath can transform us. So if you're up for it, I'd invite you to just take a deep breath. I know, it's risky. A pet theory that I've had literally for decades is that one of the ideas behind why people get addicted to cigarette smoking is because it's related to breath. Now think about it. You're, oh, God, oh, I need a cigarette. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. And how ironic is it that we're breathing in tar and nicotine to calm down? <laughs> and maybe that's a part of it, but what if it's also associated to the notion that we finally gave ourselves permission to breathe deeply? I got a message from a former student of mine quite a few years ago saying that they found this scientific study that breathing and cigarette smoking were connected in that way. He said, well, Doc Ellison's been saying that forever. What difference does it make to simply call our attention to how we breathe? Most of us don't really breathe very deeply at all. If you look at this chart, it, and it isn't just the lower part of that, the lower reserves of our lungs that we don't take advantage of, but if you'll take a look, even the part of breath that moves through our lungs that we allow, we tend to make the tidal volume, what flows in and what flows out, very often very shallow. We have this incredible resource that we don't take advantage of. And it's always there for us, always, no matter what we do. And so I'd invite you to notice your breath again. And now think of inviting your breath in. And let it go. How much time do we spend on automatic pilot, when breath can open us to a whole array of possibilities. More about that soon. Have you ever been driving to work or home and suddenly you got there and went, how did I get here? I don't remember. Anybody ever done that? 
<laughs> Every day I heard someone to <laughs> say. And so actually in terms of habit is such a powerful force in our lives that one recommendation for breaking a habit is literally drive a new route. So I'd invite you to uh, invite the notion that all of the wonderful construction that we've been having to drive through <laughs> is actually a gift. I know, I know. <laughs> but how does it force us to get out of our habits and go off of automatic pilot and figure out how do I get there today? That entrance is closed. We. And that also challenges us to shift our relationship to time. Well, something that I've been noticing in terms of being on autopilot is when I eat, often I would just already be on to the next chip or the next bite before I finish chewing what's in my mouth. Anybody else ever done that? Or is that just me? Well, what I've noticed when I put that other bite of food down or that chip is that I notice more of the taste that's in my mouth. I chew it more fully and really allow it to nourish me in a more conscious way and take the time to breathe rather than having gone through that whole bag of potato chips and not even realize, well, how did that happen? I just wanted a couple that you can't eat just one. <laughs> so how can we take ourselves off of automatic pilot? And how can breath be a gateway into new possibility for us? I brought visceral aids, not just visual aids. You may notice there are balloons in your seat. Kevin and Christina were kind enough to spread balloons out and even to blow up a few. And so uh, if you're really feeling courageous, I'd invite you to pull out your balloon. I have extras if you need one. Anybody need another balloon? Yes, no? I love playing for these for lots of reasons. Yes, thank you! So I would invite you to, well, you might want to warm your balloon up, right? Because you know, if you've ever not done that, sort of like, oh, there's this threshold you have to push through. So just like we might warm up our voices or our bodies before we exercise, you might want to warm your balloon up a little bit. And then, sure, thank you. Let's jump in. And if you're not, you know, this is a little too weird for you, I understand. I like to imagine we're going up a bit of We won't tell everyone, I promise. <laughs> what I love about the rules is many things, but one of them is how do they make us aware of our breath? And just notice, even just imagine blowing up the balloon, how aware you are of exhaling. Anybody perfected the art of blowing up a balloon when you're inhaling? I know. What's that about? I know. <laughs> and I love that. You have to exhale to blow up the balloon. And yes, it's okay to tie it off, and it's okay. So just let it go. <laughs> That's another thing I love about balloons. They're playful. And there's so much growth that we can do through play if we're willing to allow ourselves to do that. <laughs> they can remind us to take ourselves lightly. And I love that part. <laughs> and that's another way to remind us to let go. <laughs> so I invite you to tune into your breathing once more, whether you chose to blow up a balloon or not. But just imagine breathing in ease. 
But that's one of the reasons why I think we don't breathe as fully as we do. Because we're waiting to exhale. We're holding on. If I just hold on, everything will be all right. But if you just hold on, if you're just holding yourself together, there's no space to breathe. There's no space to let things change and flow. And space to let yourself be who you are, where you are, how you are, however that looks in any given moment. Because it's going to change. We are always in process. Always. And our breath is such a fabulous reminder of that. And a fabulous reminder that we can't control everything. We can't just hold our breath and keep living or even standing upright. So now I invite you to breathe in again. And imagine you're breathing in calm. The calm app that Will was sharing with us. Imagine you're breathing in calm. And as you exhale, you're letting go of anything that isn't calm. Now, how am I going to get through the day if I'm too calm? <laughs> what if you imagine you're breathing in calm and alertness? Very often, very often, we're encouraged to believe that what it means to be human is all about polarities. Am I winning? Am I losing? Who's right? Who's wrong? What's good? What's bad? What if you're breathing in calm alertness? You know, I think one of those polarities that we can attach to is the notion that I need energy! Well, energy and tension are not the same thing. And relaxation and lethargy are not the same thing. <laughs> But I think it can be easy to feel like we have those options. Okay, am I going to be energized today? Or am I going to relax? There are so many options between those two poles. And as you explore those options, you open to new possibilities. I love that. And one of the things about breathing is it makes us very present. You can only breathe in this moment. You can't take your next breath now. You're welcome to try. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> and this moment is where the power is. This moment is where we have the potential to change our lives, to move in a new direction, to make a choice. And the more we embrace that, how can our breaths be a tool that assists us in embracing this moment? And so I invite you once again to just imagine you're breathing in calm and alertness at the same time. So that with every breath, as it pours through you, you're more and more present, you're more and more calm, and more and more alert. What does that feel like? And we can take that further. What if you're breathing in qualities? Imagine breathing in ease. And letting go of anything that is not ease, of anything that is dis-ease. And imagine that ease is just pouring through your whole body. Our imaginations are incredibly powerful. Imagine breathing in clarity. With every breath, there's more clarity. That with every breath, you're breathing in fresh light, fresh light, new possibilities. That is what breath is designed to do, to refresh us, to fill us up, from a whole new threshold. And how can that simple act change how you feel, change the state that you're in, just by shifting your relationship to your breath? 
Now, can we take that even further? Imagine now that you're breathing in joy. Or whatever qualities work for you, please don't be limited by my imagination, which, granted, can be pretty out there. <laughs> what if you're filling up with joy, but you're breathing joy into every cell? And as you exhale, you're letting go of anything that's not joy. And imagine doing a few breaths of that so you're so filled with joy through every atom, through every molecule, through every particle of your being that there's no fear, doubt, anger left to let go of. So that now you're breathing in joy and as you exhale, you're shining joy. You're radiating joy. You are a beacon of light for joy. And what might that feel like? To really claim yourself as a beacon of light. Have you ever seen anyone who seemed to just light up the room by walking into it? Or conversely, someone who seemed to suck all the air out of the room? <laughs> we get to choose. I love that. I love that we get to choose. And how breath, just the simple act of noticing our breath, can assist us in changing how we relate to the world. Because our breath is a constant interchange with the world. And so now, as you claim this beacon of light, or beacon of clarity, beacon of joy, that you are, what if we can take that even further? What if you imagine breathing into, through, and beyond old assumptions. Assumptions about yourself, assumptions about other people, assumptions about the world. What if we breathe into, through, and beyond old limitations, old fears and doubts, old categorizations, old polarizations that separate us from other people? that position us as us against them. Rather than looking at what do we all have in common? A lot. <laughs> and so we are literally bursting old ideas. <laughs> and that can happen spontaneously. I love that part. And it can be a process. So one more step. The theme of the day is the art of battling giants. I believe we get what we notice. And if we're always geared for battle, we're ready for a fight, we'll find one. I'm not suggesting there are not times when we do need to armor up and go to battle. But perhaps that's not as much as we think we need to. I do transformational body and energy work, and one session that I had with a client a long time ago, the image came up. He was a warrior on a battlefield in full battle regalia, facing an army by himself. He took off the armor, and the army disappeared. What if at least some of those giants that we think we have to battle our illusions, are our fears. Well, what if I'm not good enough? What if someone doesn't like me? Someone's not going to like you throughout your life. I'm so sorry to break that news. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing at all. Because your job is not to please everyone around you. Your mother wants you to do something. Your girlfriend or boyfriend wants you to do something else. Please them both at the same time. Ready, go. May not happen. And that's okay. But what if some of those giants are illusions that we can just shine our light, the beacon of light that we are, what if we can shine right through that? And find out that perhaps some of those giants are like the wizard in the Wizard of Oz. Because if we look at the man behind the curtain, we see that he's just as afraid as we are. 
And if we can shine light to him and love, perhaps we can assist him in shifting in ways he didn't know he could shift. So my wish for you is to take a balloon or two, uh, if you'd like. There are more back on the table, and I've got lots more. But how my breath and balloons remind you to breathe, to invite your breath in and allow your breath to transform, to be playful and gentle with yourself, to breathe into beyond so that you're really breathing into and expanding into your possibilities. Shining through the landscape of your life. What happens if you just breathe across that landscape? And if the amazing sky reminds you of the ability that we have to change. And to breathe. Thank you.